Okay, so in the last video, I mentioned that this one would be a little bit different from the mathy stuff that I usually talk about. And if you read the title, you probably already know that I'll be talking about career oriented stuff and math things in terms of like what types of jobs that you can get with your mathematics major. And so I'm making this video because as a kid, um, my parents ran a Kumon Math and Reading Center and I often worked in that center and I was always surrounded by a lot of families that always stressed the importance of mathematics and how it could help you become an engineer or a doctor or a lawyer and all of those fancy things. And I never really took that seriously because I always just enjoyed the mathy bits of math. However, uh, being a senior in college and getting into your number one choice grad school and then finding out that you're not getting any financial support in the form of a TA ship or some job position at the institution to help support you through that PhD program uh, sucks. And um, that was sort of a wake up call for me to figure out like, oh, I need to figure out what I can do with my math degree outside of academia. And I think it's important to know how mathematics adds value to you as an employee. Um, and so now two years since I was told yes and then no 24 hours later, I thought it would be a good idea to approach this, this question of what jobs you can get with a mathematics major with instead answering the question of how does a mathematics major add value? And how do those skills that come from studying math play a role in the workplace or in different career paths and what tasks you'll need to do within those career paths? So in this video, I'm gonna talk about two major qualities that math develops in people that study it. But the first one that I wanna talk about is the one that was kind of drilled into me as a child that I kind of just ignored because it, I just liked the math part of math. And that is math develops analytic skills at a foundational level. And so what I mean by that is that, sure, most of the other fields that fall under the STEM umbrella develop skills that have some transferability. And of course, the Venn diagram here could be much more complicated, but you kind of get the idea. Some things that you learn in physics can apply to chemistry and biology and computer science and where things overlap, things overlap, right? But math kind of takes that overlapping nature to a whole nother level. Um, you can find bits and pieces of things that come up in math and you can insert them or pull them out of different fields of study and different concepts that you learn in different fields of study. So one example of this is with the idea of a function that is an exponential function. So f of x is equal to a to the x power, where x is a real number and a is a positive real number. And by positive, we exclude zero in this case. And so this exponential growth and decay, uh, depending on which a you choose, that is a positive real number, um, you can apply that elsewhere, you can you can find it and understand what is going on in other fields. So like in chemistry, this comes into radioactive decay. And in material science, it goes directly into Newton's law of cooling. Whereas in physics, it can help you describe some characteristics of fluid flow specifically in the case of fluid flowing out of a container. There are also applications in biology with the initial spread of a virus, finance with compound interest, and computer science with understanding what it means for an algorithm to have exponential complexity and what that means for the required memory needed to execute that program and the other resources required for the computer to efficiently process the memory needed for that program. Now in the actual workplace where this comes in is recognizing patterns and different processes, and especially in STEM fields where the math is actually there, um, it gives you a leg up in that you don't have to spend as much time trying to understand the math that you're encountering because you have a solid foundation of what is at the core of that mathematically and what those numbers mean, and then you just need to apply the context to what those numbers mean. And so this leads directly into the second thing that I wanted to talk about, 
Um, and that has to deal with the fact that math develops a very strong sense of logic and problem solving in those that study it. So what I mean by this is that in any job that you ever do, there are two sort of styles of thinking about what you're doing and how you understand doing them. Whether you be a manager of a multi-billion dollar company or you are just working an entry level job at a McDonald's. Um, you can either have a formulaic understanding of what you're doing or you can have a, what I'll call a conceptual understanding of what you're doing. So for example, if you have a formulaic understanding of your job, basically what that means is that in scenario A, you have some prescribed task that you will complete um, to get that thing to situation B. Whereas in the conceptual understanding of how things work, there's more of a process oriented feel to what you're doing. Math at the undergraduate level, especially after you've finished your calculus courses and you've gotten into more proofy math that avoids a lot of computation, really focuses on this conceptual level of understanding about what you're doing. And so math really helps you figure out how to think about things outside of the thing that you have to do in order to complete your job. And this actually plays a big role in a lot of jobs out there in the market today. Various types of engineers have to have this mindset when they go into uh, developing or drafting up to design for a new product or tool or layout. Um, you also have people like logisticians that their entire job is just to basically know the pipeline and to figure out how to get something from point A to point B through all of the middlemen that come in between A and B and know exactly how those processes work and what the backup plans are if any of those processes fail. Similar to logisticians, information technology and information security workers have to really understand how certain pieces of technological architecture fit together and both have to develop ways to move data around and to make sure that that data is secure while making sure that systems stay up and are available for consumers to use. And all of these careers require a very conceptual basis for understanding what you're doing and how you need to do those things. And math is one of those fields that really drives into you the idea of the importance of thinking conceptually about a process. And so with those two things in mind, you can really get a good sense of why math is considered a foundation for a lot of jobs that are out there in the workforce today, even outside of the STEM fields. Math can act as a foundation for physics and chemistry, geology, biology, material science, engineering, actuarial science, statistics, data science, software development and design, information technology, security and or cryptography, finance, economics, logistics, product development and design, and also teaching. And there are research opportunities that you can get with just a math degree with the government too, so that's a thing. The point here is that if you're interested in any of these fields and think that you might not be able to do them because you decided to get a math degree, that's very far from the truth. If you wanna do any of those things, math has already provided you a very solid foundation to do a lot of them. And in many cases, you might not need to do anything else in order to get jobs in these fields. However, it doesn't hurt to be strategic about it. Having a math degree alone doesn't necessarily mean that you'll land a job in econ if you haven't put any time to learn anything about econ. It definitely helps if you've taken a few classes or have a hobby um, that is related to econ that you put a lot of time into and have a good genuine understanding of concepts within those other fields outside of the mathy generalization of everything. And so, for example, for me, like I ended up in a job in IT and I did not have any IT experience before, but they thought I would be a good fit because I would be reading a lot of logs and I had a lot of foreign language background to support my math degree. And so somehow they thought that because I was 
a foreign language learner and I had a lot of these analytic skills from math, that that would go really well into reading computer logs and error logs and things like that, deciphering them for what is going wrong with a system. And, and that's another example of you don't necessarily have to specialize in any of these fields in order to get a job in these fields. You just need to have the foundational qualities that a certain company is looking for in employees. So yeah, that's all I have for you today. I hope that this helped you think about how math can help you develop skills, whether or not you are pursuing a math major that are helpful in the professional space. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Uh, you can also subscribe for a lot of the more technical mathy stuff that I do on this channel. Again, I'm Nathan, this is Chalk, and I will see you next time.